morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. I made it. I made it today. So I hope you guys can join me. And we're going to talk about some really, really good stuff today. Um, one of my dear friends uh, mentioned yesterday that I should definitely consider educating on uh, learning how to rest on the homestead. So my question to you guys is, good morning Rachel. <laughs> my question to you guys this morning is, how many of you struggle to rest? I'm going to wait a few minutes and see how many more people we can get on here. Hello, hello. <laughs> And I am going to check something real quick here. How are you guys all doing today? And how are how do you guys do um, when sickness sets in and uh, maybe your your normal day is no longer normal? Maybe not just necessarily sickness, but maybe depression. Um, and and you're forced to rest. So. How do you how do you handle that? Is it a struggle? Good morning, Lisa. I am looking something up real quick here and then I will jump back on here. Give me one second. Okay. Well, I just got on the recorder. <laughs> Good, but you're listening to your body, right? And that's the important thing. Rachel just said she just got on the recliner to rest her body. And that's the beauty of Facebook Live. I'm the one that's yakking away. You guys can just sit and relax, and that's that's good. I want you to learn how to do that because, honestly, I feel that is the biggest struggle people have. We live in a society that requires or um, demonstrates an insanely fast pace, and we all try to mimic each other and it's just really unhealthy and the next question I have for you is do you guys listen to your body like are you really in tune with your body um, I have gotten to such a, a degree in my healing that I I know what my body needs good morning Leanne and, and I wanted to thank my friend George. You can check him out over at um, North 60 Alaska Living here on Facebook. A uh, real good friend of mine from Alaska. He has lived off grid. He is an extreme outdoorsman. And, and he's the one that suggested yesterday that I, I touch on this subject. And I thought, well, you know, how appropriate. Because yesterday when I messaged that I wasn't going to do my live, I was still in bed. Um, this has been an incredibly crazy week for me. Um, started out that I was having problems swallowing and the muscles were tightening in my neck after last week's um, Facebook Live. And um, the swallowing part was new. That was really weird and very uncomfortable. It was actually painful. Um, it just felt like somebody was shoving my esophagus up. Good morning, Tammy. And from there, I went into um, a histamine intolerance situation. I haven't really experienced that much since before my surgery. Uh, because my body was so taxed before my surgery, that had set in. And that is also a bit of an alarming experience because my body gets too much histamine and it doesn't break it down on its own. And I end up in anthralactic situations. So that was quite exciting. Um, but I'm going to share with you today not only how to rest, but also how to remedy some of these things. Because I used all natural things to get myself back on track. And I want to share that with you because it's so, so simple to be able to put ourselves back into a healthy situation if we know how. Um, from there, um, this is kind of a TMI for you guys maybe, but you guys get it too. I ended up with a bladder infection. And, and then from there, uh, I was feeling really good on... Um, Tuesday and was celebrating that and the mountain man and I went to one of our customer sites to look over the job site and I got stung by a bee and because my immune system is taxed and impaired um, and doesn't work like everybody else's I I normally would have swelled up and and had struggles good morning Ashley um, prior to my surgery that's what would have happened 
But I've been I've been carrying my baggie around of my oils, and I also have a magnesium spray that I've been carrying around. And I'll explain about that. But at the job site, I instantly put lavender on the bite, and then I put um, lavender, peppermint, and lemongrass on my chest. And so I didn't have any struggles, and thankfully my histamine levels were, were lowered during the week through uh, the teas and things I was uh, drinking. And um, I, felt, I felt okay. But about 45 minutes to an hour after I got bit, my eyes started feeling weird. And um, I have a weird, I don't know if anybody else experiences this, I imagine, but the soft tissue in my eye swells up over my eyeball when I have allergic reactions. But it didn't feel like that. And my eyes were getting horrendously red and it hurt to move my eyeballs. And then I realized what was happening. And I ended up with pink eye in both of my eyes. And that was just from the bee bite. So, like I said, it's been a week. And I will be honest, um, these weeks tend to be hard. Um, we've got a lot going on right now. We've got a lot of pressure. We've got a lot of people um, pushing us. And a lot of... Um, it's just, it's just a really awful spot to be in to begin with. And then to have health issues. And, you know, we're all pushing, trying to accomplish... Um, you know, our, our deadlines and, and get this place sold and do the work and we're all working at the same time. So it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of stress. And I feel compelled to keep moving. However, my body is telling me to rest. And um, there are a lot of you out there that have autoimmune um, diseases and issues. You have chronic illness. And I know that you can relate to what I'm talking about. I, I know that you um, understand. But I also want to encourage you because it does get hard in these spots. Um, in addition to um, my throat being tight, all of my soft tissue on my back and my muscles and everything else were really swelling up. It felt like I was laying on inner tubes at one point during the week. And it was really concerning. Um, but it's just the way my body is and it's what I've got to roll with. I've got to learn to conquer each thing and just keep moving forward. And that's why I thought today I would share with you learning how to rest. How many of you, I know Ashley is on here so I know she can relate too. Um, when you have those setbacks and they suddenly just set in, you know, you have a choice. You have a choice to just roll with it or you have a choice to let it bring you down. And it was really funny. One of the devotionals I read this morning is actually a woman who has um, autoimmune issues. And I found it in the shed when I was going through things in my filing cabinet. I don't know where I got it, but it's just funny. Like I said when, before, when, I'm, when I was going through the filing cabinet and through the shed, my younger self was educating my older self in just so many ways. It was really cool because I found uh, quotes that I had saved and just different things that were very empowering. And this book is written by a woman with an autoimmune disease. And I just thought it was so ironic and so funny that, you know, I had it before. I don't remember having it, but it's very fitting now. And one of the things she said is that she sets things aside, like a book that she'd like to read, a craft that she'd like to do, a movie that she'd like to watch. She designates things and sets them aside for when she has setbacks. So when she has a setback, she has something to fall back you know, into and rest into. And sadly, it's a shame that we don't just know how to just rest, but we need a, a purpose and, and something to help us rest. It's, I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? Am I the, am I the only one that does that? I mean, it's hard to rest. It's hard to just stop and, and give ourselves that, that time to either heal or mend or, or just regroup. Um, you know, Sundays, is our day of rest and I I look so forward to it and uh, it's not something that we always did not religiously but we do now and I'll tell you what it is such a blessing to have that day to unplug to spend time as a family we eat lunch and then we go take a nap yes a nap N-A-P that is like an unheard of word for most of society today. But there are a lot of people out there that know the, the beautiful um, healing 
abilities of a nap. One of the um, people I follow, michaelhyatt.com, he takes a 20-minute nap after his lunch every day to repower himself. I mean, there is such strong healing in taking a nap because it allows our body to rejuvenate. It allows our body to rest for a little bit. And 20-minute naps can be so powerful for not only the mind but the body too. So how many of you nap? I'd love to know. And, and if, you, if you do it religiously... Rachel, thank you for my mug. This is the most beautiful mug I have. I absolutely love it. I'm also drinking herbal coffee, which you can check out the description below today. There is a lot of links and a lot of information. I encourage you to copy and paste it and, and uh, print it out. Um, this herbal coffee used to be for sale. Uh, my friend created it and was making it and selling it. And she hit a glitch with the FDA. They determined that initially it was a food product, but then they decided it was a natural health supplement. So she had to go through such expense to get registered and certified that she had to um, re. She took it off the market. She had to take it off the market because she couldn't afford to do it. I nap daily, 15 to 20 minutes, and Ashley says. It, it, it's insanely hard to stop. Yes, we are so obsessed with accomplishing and consider it to be more valuable than resting. Be still and know that I am God is far more valuable in accomplishing our goals than any of our stress and effort, but it's incredibly hard to reprogram our belief system. Amen. And oh, that is so true. And, and that is the thing that most of us forget. And that is one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to do this today. She says, yep, I am totally a napper now that my body will let me sleep again, and naps are huge for my healing. Amen, yes. And I struggled with that too, Ashley. That's so hard when you want to sleep, and you know you need sleep, and your body just won't stop. Oh, that's so, so hard. Sometimes I am able to nap, but not as much as I should. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's like Ashley said, we are programmed, and that's what I said in the beginning. We follow a society that is at such a fast pace, and this stuff isn't heard of. I wish a nap doesn't quite work in an office job. <laughs> Take a 20 minute nap in your car at lunch. <laughs> Just set a timer. <laughs> but it it is the hardest thing for us to reprogram and that is one of the was one of the hardest things when I got sick. But it was also one of the most eye-opening moments I had was when I realized that God had me right where he wanted me, flat on my back, unable to accomplish the things that I could but to rest in him. And for those of you out there that do have autoimmune and chronic illness, you know, there is something really peaceful in accepting that it's okay to rest and learning, like Ashley said too, that it, that it is so powerful and healing for the body. For those of you that have sleep struggles, the mountain man has horrendous trouble sleeping and I found a homeopathic um, supplement from Highland and the link is down below. It's treyerwilderness.com slash sleep. And it is all natural, but it is a wonderful um, and great aid for those of us that have struggled sleeping. Um, I also, I don't know if this is it or not. Sorry. I get to look up my nose. Sorry. Um, no, that's not it. I have a liquid melatonin also that is very different than any other melatonin I've ever taken. Melatonin never worked for me. But when I was sick, my doctor recommended a liquid, and I will share a link with that uh, with you guys next week. Um, but being able to rest and find peace in that is so important, and listening to your body. I know Ashley is right there with me. I know that she had quite many years of learning the process of our bodies, and I know she is just as in tune. And when you start to listen to your body, you can gain so much insight and uh, prevent things because you can feel it coming on. Um, and, and also what I want to recommend to you guys that are out there with chronic illnesses and autoimmune diseases, create a daily journal of how you feel and, and track what you did to feel better. Ashley says, two of my most favorite books for learning to slow down and be present are Dancing with Elephants and The Power of Now, both incredible. The Dancing with Elephants is a book written by a chronically terminally ill 
man who shared his story of coming to peace with his life and God. It's a beautiful book. Same with, um, oh, Tuesdays with Maury is another really good one. Um, I had mentioned that one earlier in the year. Thank you for sharing those. I'm going to have to look those up, Ashley. I love to read, and I love those kind of books. And it's it's amazing. I um When you're going through a journey like this, I feel like God plants things along that journey, books, people, um, devotionals, but things to encourage us to keep going and directing us on a certain path. And I really feel that it's just constant if you keep open and you're willing to also look for that. Um, the guidance that is given and that still small voice, that still small voice is still the most amazing thing in the world to me. Um, how it's just so timely and, and it's just like listening to your body. If you slow down, you will hear, um, the most amazing things when you slow down. And most of the time we're at such a fast pace that we're missing. There we go. It's back. It was spinning and spinning. I want to share something with you. One of the things I've been doing a lot right now is teas. And this is a really awesome infuser. My mother-in-law got this for me and I brought this up here because I am replenishing my cup as quickly as I empty it. Um, it's really important that you stay hydrated regardless if you have health issues or not because dehydration really messes up your body. It causes organs to fail. It causes things not to work right and from there you end up with a whole basket full of mess. So make sure you're drinking enough and make sure you're drinking a lot of water. My teas, my herbal teas are decaffeinated. Um, be careful when you're drinking caffeine. A lot of coffee and a lot of caffeinated teas will dehydrate you. Um, but I want to share some of the things that I've learned this week. Um, not so much learned this week, but that I want to share this week with you um, so that you know how to utilize these and work through these things. Um, the one thing that I did learn was using the magnesium oil. Um, as I mentioned, my muscles were really tightening. Something else in addition to drinking water that's really important is making sure that you are stretching. Stretching all of your muscles. Um, whether it's through yoga or just a lot of bending and stretching, um, gardening. <laughs> um, but stretching your muscles is really important because it enables them to, to function properly. And um, with my illness, my muscles are one of my struggles because they are loaded with toxins and silicone. So I run into struggles where suddenly a group of my muscles will stop working. Um, I was getting knots in my abs for a while that were the size of either a baseball or a softball, depending on my situation. Ashley says, the Dancing with Elephants book was a random recommendation by one of my YouTube viewers. I don't usually go out and buy books that people recommend without looking into them, but something just pushed me to buy it, and it was absolutely divine guidance. It helped Jesse a ton to being the husband of a very ill wife. So I totally agree that what we need often comes to us at a perfect time if we are asking, open, and grateful. Amen. Isn't that crazy? I just love that. That is the part of... My faith walk that just awes me and that I love the most because, and I think that's what builds on my faith as well, is seeing all those stepping stones and seeing those divine blessings constantly that take us to another level, that take us out of one place and into another. So be open and, and be accepting of these things because... Sometimes that's awesome too that you just bought that one because I experienced that too, Ashley, where there's certain things that I just feel such a strong nudge that I don't even question it. I just do it. And that's also just part of being in tune and, 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 and accepting and just walking in true faith. So I, that's awesome. And thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, I was saying about the stomach knots. Good morning, Chad. The stomach knots um, were because of all the toxins in my abs and a lot of times I'd be bending down when they would tighten up so I'd have to breathe through it so that they would release and, and um, allow me to stand back up. No worries, glad you're here. Um, but the magnesium oil is really awesome because it's very fast acting. So when these muscles here in my throat were tightening up and I was having problems swallowing, 
this really helped a lot. So if you are dealing with a lot of cramping and muscle issues similar to mine, I highly recommend finding yourself some magnesium oil. I will have a link for that next week because I'm actually working on the website for the folks that are selling it. So um, once that's live, I will I will present you with a, a link for that. Um, and knowing these things, it's really important to write things down. We learn a lot of things on our journeys, and I would highly encourage you to create like a natural health journal, one that you keep a track of how you're feeling daily and the things that you've had and how you've healed yourself from them, and also n new recipes and remedies. Um, my friend George up in Alaska has shared several awesome recipes with me that um, really aided me in my um, journey prior to my surgery. Actually um, kept me alive, so it's really awesome. Yes, Evernote, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Yes, yeah, so if you don't use Evernote, go to tryyourwilderness.com slash Evernote. Trust me, you won't go wrong. I've got like 3,000 notes in there, and you can search it and find things at the snap of a finger, so it makes it really awesome when you're putting your recipes in there and when you're keeping track of your daily schedule. Um, the other thing is essential oils. I use a lot of essential oils, and um, with... This week's challenges, I use them a lot. Um, something very simple you can do if you have pink eye is you can take lavender oil, put a drop on your finger, and just run it up the bridge of your nose, and I run it across my eyebrows. But I do that about four times a day with pink eye, and yesterday I couldn't even open my eyes, and today my eyes aren't even red. They're a little red, maybe. But I couldn't even open my eyelids yesterday. So it was really crazy, and my, my eyes were really puffed up. So lavender oil is amazing. Um, the other thing that I did with my allergic reaction, um, it's more of a histamine issue that causes anthralactic shock. Um, but allergies, um, nettle tea or nettle supplements, tinctures, um, nettle's really good for allergies. Um, I also put lavender oil peppermint oil and lemongrass oil on my chest and um, that really helps relieve the pressure and tension from um, an allergic reaction. So I highly recommend that if you have allergies, carry those around. They're rarely easy. Um, they're not harmful to your body. I hate taking antihistamines because they make me tired and useless. Um, Zyrtec is okay. It doesn't make me tired, but still I don't like tr taking medication if I don't have to. And oils are really easy. A drop and you're good. So uh, there's a lot of healing power in oils. Now, my bladder infection, I put lemongrass oil on the bottom of my feet. That set in in the middle of the night, so I couldn't get to all of my other supplements because some are packed away, some are in a cupboard, and I didn't feel like waking the family. But I knew I have carry lemongrass all the time. Um, I will share with you why in a second. But I put lemongrass on the bottom of my feet and I rubbed it on my abdomen um, and instantly got relief from the burning needles um, that you get from a urinary tract infection. So that was awesome. And then I take milk thistle for my liver because of processing all the toxins that I am. And I kind of upped that a little bit with taking milk thistle tea. And I'm also drinking holy basil, which will help with the histamine to lower the histamine. I'm also taking olive leaf tea, um, which again helps the histamine and lowers the histamine levels, and nettle. So nettle will help with that also with the breathing and the tightness. Um, the reason I carry lemongrass with me all the time, this is amazing. For those of you that struggle when you go into the mall and the candle stores and the perfumes and all the stinky smells, and you go to the um, cleaning aisle in the grocery store and have to get your detergent, if you sniff lemongrass before you go into those places, it will coat your sinuses and alleviate getting headaches and nauseated and, and all the other symptoms and nastiness that comes with odors. I never had problems with odors before until after my surgery, and then everything got intensified. I couldn't pump gas. I couldn't pump diesel. I, I was really struggling until my friend um, shared with me about using lemongrass, and that changed everything. So I want to pass that on because... It's amazing how something so simple can change a life. 
So keep that in mind um, and share that if you know people that are dealing with um, odor issues. A lot of autistic children struggle with strong with problems with strong odors and being able to handle them, and that's a great a great fix. However, lemongrass is kind of strong, but if they can smell it once, it'll it'll remedy that for them. Um, another thing I wanted to share, this is something I learned this week and she asked me to share it so I've got a good audience here today, I'm going to pass this along. Um, our customer that we were visiting with, she got shingles about 10 years ago and every year they reoccur for her. And she can feel them setting in and when they do, she uses coconut oil. She used to use honey and with honey being so sticky and um, her spot was on the back of her leg, she decided one day just to try coconut oil. And she rubbed it on there when the pain started coming in and uh, rubbed it on there every four hours. And then the way it works with shingles is you'll get that initial pain and then 48 hours later you'll start breaking out. And she said she used to break out into like 10, 12 bumps, but once she used the coconut oil she only got three or four bumps. And then she started using the coconut oil on them as well. And within the same day of them breaking out from using the coconut oil four times and just rubbing the oil on them, they already scabbed up and she was on, on the mending side of shingles. Shingles is very painful and shingles is really rough on the system. So something so simple as coconut oil, um, the benefits of coconut oil are amazing. I take a spoonful every day. Um, to help with my healing and it is just amazing. I also make a lot of my um, salves um, and lotions out of coconut oil. Uh, just a little tidbit on this one. This is coconut oil, aloe vera, um, raspberry seed oil or extract and um, I have melaleuca or tea tree oil in here, lavender, helichrysum, I think that's all that's in this one. But I use this for all kinds of things. This is so good for skin and skin irritation, um, psoriasis, um, eczema, those type of things. So I will be putting a blog post out with the actual recipe for this because this is a really useful um, recipe. I got it from Mama Z, but I altered mine a little bit for my needs. So um, it's great when you can get organic and... It, the important thing is when you are making things that you're using quality products to put into them. So like organic aloe vera, organic um, non-GMO coconut oil. It's really important because if you're putting, you know, using something with toxins in it, it's not helping you near as much as if you were using the wholesome ingredients for the base. So just keep that in mind. Um, let me just take a look here at my notes. I just want to make sure I share everything with you guys. And I think I mentioned it, nettle is really good for um, allergies as well. So if you have nettle tea or if you are able to get, um, there's a supplement that I'm taking that Ashley recommended and I will share that next week or add that to the list uh, below. Um, I also mentioned about the herbal coffee. You can find her recipe book for the herbal coffees at treyerwilderness.com slash herbal coffee. Um, also, um, this coming week is when the um, free herbalist course will be opening up. So if you haven't signed up for that, you can do that at treyerwilderness.com slash herbalist. I really want to encourage that, guys. You can see how simple it was for me to be able to heal myself with things that I have in my home versus having to go to the doctor. I mean, I would have had to go how many times this week, and that's just a drag, and I I. I, the last time I was at the doctor was three years ago. So I don't like doctors, and I prefer to be able to do what I can myself. There is a time and a place for um, medical doctors, but I try to do as much as I can on my own. And the more we educate ourselves, the more we benefit, and the more we can help ourselves and our families and others. Um, Ashley is really good at going out and creating her own tinctures and, and things and foraging as well. She's been doing a lot of neat stuff this summer. Also, um, Thrive Market is a great place to get your coconut oil and your aloe vera, your teas, and you can find them by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Thrive Market. And as far as oils go, um, there's always that oil controversy that goes on. I use a couple different types of oils. 
and I'll just go over them real quick with you. I use from Plant Therapy. I also use from Rocky Mountain Oils. And I also use from doTERRA. I do have some of Young Living's also because I like their um, uh, thieves. Because thieves actually kills off mold and, and um, bacteria in the home a little better than doTERRA's on guard. So, you know, you got to figure out what works for you, but I also use doTERRA. So, you know... There are there are oil snobs that only choose to use one brand and and everything, but you got to kind of see what works for you. Sometimes some things don't work as good as others, and learning through that and also um, word of mouth and and so forth. You know you gotta you gotta see what works for you and also what fits your budget. That's another thing and can be very hard. Um, we're very familiar and we know that. So sometimes you have to take the lesser. Um, quality because of your financial situation but it's still better than not using anything at all or using um, you know a, a poorer brand there are some out there that aren't very good these are ones that I feel are, are more quality and um, there's also another one out there the now brand is also some that I that I have downstairs as well but these are the ones I've been carrying with me and um, if you haven't tried oils, I, I highly recommend that you um, check out and, and at least get um, lavender, peppermint, lemongrass, um, and if you can afford to get uh, frankincense, those would be good ones to start with and to have because you can utilize those for so many different things. Um, tea tree oil also, melaleuca, is another good one to have for its uh, antimicrobial uh, qualities. So, I've given you lots of information. How many of you use natural remedies already? I know Ashley does, and I know Rachel does, and I think Chad does. But how about the rest of you out there? I would love to know, you know, um, and also if you have other things that you use for a urinary tract infection, allergies, um pink eye, any of those things. You can also use charcoal for pink eye. Um, you can create a um, dampen a rag with charcoal and actually put it across your eyes. Charcoal will draw out the toxins and, and draw things so it's really really awesome thing to have in your uh, medicine cabinet but that's activated charcoal is what you want to purchase. Awesome Tammy. Tammy also uses a lot of natural remedies. You know, it's so nice to be able to heal yourself simply. Um, you know, like pink eye, they, they give you the goop for in your eye, and it takes like up to three to four days for that to really kick in and resolve the issues. And um, I just hate taking antibiotics because they get stuck in your system and they clog your system, and then they cause you to have other issues on top of that. So when you can utilize something natural, um, it's it's so much better for you and teas are easy to make you know if you're home by yourself and you're not feeling good oils are easy to use um, but always use everything sparingly I did mention in the notes with the lemongrass lemongrass is a really it's a really potent oil um, it's not noted as one of the stronger ones that you need to be alerted of but I'm just gonna share this with you I accidentally dripped a, a drop of lemongrass on my keyboard and it started to melt my keyboard. So if that gives you any indication how strong these oils are and that we shouldn't be you know, playing with them, that we should um, respect them. But um, lemongrass is a pretty potent oil. So if you have sensitive skin, I would recommend using a carrier oil with that. And um, it's not a bad idea to use a carrier, carrier oil with your oils anyway. It helps you to spread it out into the area better and, and helps you get more reach and you'll still get the same benefits. So um, if you're questioning that or, or wondering, I would, I would recommend a carrier oil such as coconut oil um, to utilize with any of your essential oils. The other thing is make sure when you are out and about that you have your oils with you. We go camping and that is one of the things in my arsenal. I will take some of my um, salve along with and then I will take um, 
two or three packs of little sample bottles of all of my oils so that depending on the situation we have out there we have everything we need. Last time, last year when we went camping the one time, we ended up having to stitch up our Rhodesian Ridgeback. Uh, she sliced herself on um, an axe that was sitting there. It was just a freak thing and just the way she was sitting and she stood up and sliced her elbow open. So um, it's really important that you have first aid with you, whether it's in your vehicle, um, in your packs, whatever the case may be. A good carrier oil, um, Chad, is coconut oil, um, grapeseed oil, apricot oil, um, but I coconut oil is probably the easiest one to get your hands on. and. Um, I, I usually carry a bottle of carrier oil as well as then all my other oils depending on what I need to use. You know, earaches or infections out there, we're going fishing, different things happen. So it's just always good to have them on hand and when you're, you know, five miles back in with a pack on your back, it's not like you can run out to the car or go get help. So always, you know, think of those things and, and oils are something that are very easy to put a couple drops in the sample bottles and carry them with you. Um, let me see here. I wanted to make sure I covered everything because I jotted a lot down. You're welcome, Chad. Also, guys, be really careful with the wildfires. You know I mentioned that a couple weeks back. California is really burning crazy right now, and prayers are going out to all of you in California and uh, the others that are affected by wildfires. We had an electrical storm come in a couple weeks, well, a couple it was last week, and um, that was quite crazy because uh, there was a lot of really wild lightning, and our customer actually got hit um, up above their, where their house is going to be building, so it was pretty crazy, and with it being as dry as it is out here, it's really, really scary. So you can check out the wildfire post that I wrote so that you can consider different things to think about in those situations. Uh, treyerwilderness.com slash wildfires and then uh, treyerwilderness.com slash wildfire alerts will alert you if there are fires close to your vicinity. Um, it's just really dry here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not sure where everybody's from, but you know, it's not a bad idea to check it out and just see if there's anything going on in your area. Also, um, if you haven't checked out our academy, Right now there is a free bread baking course and you can go to treyerwildernessacademy.com and you'll find that under the free courses. And we also have our skill of the month membership where you can join us monthly uh, for a new skill, uh, for self-reliance, uh, preparedness. Uh, it's the whole gamut of our lifestyle as well as things that uh, you need to know to move yourself into the future, like preserving your food and so forth. So check that out. Share it with your friends. Uh, there is some new free courses coming soon. Salt Lake Valley is filled with smoke pretty bad for over a week now. Yeah, we were getting a lot of smoke too. There was a fire in Spokane, Washington that was drifting this way, but right now it's just spreading out pretty good. Yeah, it's just that time of year. So just be careful because, you know, the smoke lingers and you think it's from further away fires when something actually sets in closer to you. And being on the ready is really important. As I mentioned before, um, you know, we had our trailer parked and ready to be pulled out of the driveway so there was no time wasted turning it around. And we had it loaded with everything that we would need to rebuild because the fires were so close three years ago. So... You know, just be be ready, be prepared, um, you know, know what's going on in your surroundings. But guys, do you have any questions on um, the things that we were talking about today? Do you have anything else you'd like to share? And are there any topics that you would like us to cover upcoming? I'm really grateful for you guys joining me and, and also your interactivity. It's just, it's... It's really awesome. Um, I enjoy chatting with you guys, and even though I missed it yesterday, I still couldn't put it off till next week. I really, I enjoy this so very much, getting together with you guys. So, um, and sharing because there's so much to be shared, and so many things that are always useful. And the more we spread them around, like the coconut oil with the, with shingles, um, that's such a great and simple relief for something that's very painful. Um, so it's worth, worth sharing. So, and don't ever hesitate to share your tips and tricks too, because I can learn from you and, 
and others can learn from what you have to share as well. So don't ever hesitate to share, and if you're watching this on the replay or on YouTube, leave your comments below and share as well because they are viewed by others and I check all of our messages. So don't hesitate to share information. Well, guys, I'm going to say a quick prayer for us. Dear Jesus, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone. I ask that you especially help those that are dealing with struggles and pain and illness. And Lord, just help us all learn to rest and to rest in you and to learn to slow our pace down that we can hear your still small voice and heal our bodies and have the smarts to always listen to our bodies rather than continue pushing. And Lord, just bless everyone here and those listening on the replay. Just bless them with your presence and your love. And Lord, I just ask that you give us all wisdom and knowledge in our days ahead and just keep your hand of safety on us and Lord just thank you so much for all your blessings and the blessings you're going to instill on us ahead and I ask this in Jesus precious name amen okay I see a question here are there oils that aren't safe for kids um, it depends on ages um, younger children um, is where the uh, oils uh, restrictions usually lie. Wintergreen is one that you definitely want to not use on younger children until they're much older. Um, lavender on boys um, can... Uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? It, it can mess with their hormones some, so you want to be uh, careful on how much lavender you use on boys. Um, and there are others. So that's a good question, Chad. Um, those are the two that are at the top of my head at the moment. Um, but I will uh, put a note in next week's on the uh, child safe oils. And also some links to some good sites that refer to them. Uh, and some books. There are some great books that are wonderful for natural health, essential oils as well as natural health. And I have one that I've gotten my hands on over the last four weeks that is absolutely a must have, I think, in every home. So I will, uh, that's what next week's topic will be. I will share on the different uh, resources available for natural medicines and, and, um, the kid safe oils. Also, don't forget to sign up for the free course, um, the herbalist course with uh, uh, New England. My brain's losing. I'm losing my brain now. But uh, the New England. Uh, oh my goodness! I did go blank. But check it out. It's treyerwilderness.com/herbalist. Um, they are. That's where I've been taking my herbal classes, and I my goal is to take all of their uh, herbal courses. Uh, they have a lot of free things going on right now, and they are definitely worth your time. They did a botany class last month, and I just want to highly encourage you guys, because the more educated we are on identifying plants and being able to make our own tinctures and salves and teas, um, the better off we will be uh, moving forward. So definitely check that out. And since I'm losing my brain, I'm going to let you guys go. I appreciate you guys joining me and taking the time and also uh, just your input. It's great and I love you all and I wish you a really good week and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Take care everybody. God bless.